Following the refugee attacks on women in Germany, Sweden, and other European nations, I follow the examples of some MGTOW MRAs, anti-feminist conservatives, and libertarians to condemn feminists for ignoring the perpetrators, many of whom hail from nations that have real rape cultures. In the wake of these condemnations, while feminists in Germany responded to sputter that everybody should ignore the national origin of the perpetrators and get back to the important business of hating white men, Diana Davison and John the Other scolded us for our condemnations. While Diana claimed we were hiding from feminists behind Muslim robes, John accused us of cowardice and stupidity. Now, I realize that Diana and John were not singling me out or even thinking primarily about me, but were focusing their ire primarily on millennials and Gen Xers who have been active on YouTube much longer than me, although with a very few notable exceptions, such as Warren Farrell, most of the Manosphere in general, and YouTube in particular, joined the fight many years after I did and came to the Internet at least 10 years after me. Nonetheless, I found both Diana's and John's videos on the subject to be ignorant, arrogant, and in the case of John's video, revolting. Unlike John, I've never hidden behind a pseudonym, but have opposed misandry in public under my own name from the very start. But according to him, I'm a coward. Because of my public stand against misandry, I've lost two jobs. Two? Um, uh, uh, three. I've lost three jobs, and I have not gotten several other jobs, and was within days of being homeless at least twice. But according to John, I'm a coward and stupid. Well, maybe I'm stupid, but I'm no coward. Thanks to my public stand against misandry, despite that I have a wide range of skills, eight years of college, two degrees, and decades of experience, by age 48, about the best I could find was a job paying well below the median American income, where I remain today. But according to John, I'm a coward. I don't know if John ever got around to offering a reasoned argument because he spent so much time spewing insults that finally I just stopped listening. He did claim that women in Muslim countries are worshipped and treated better than women in the West, but that's romantic nonsense. Stress on the word romantic. When the Crusades, Crusaders came back from retaliating against the Muslim nations, the minstrels brought back with them the Muslim sagas, such as 1001 Nights, which put women on the proverbial pedestal. As these tales were absorbed into European culture, they led first to putting women upon a pedestal, and then to the gradual improvement of women's lot in Western cultures, where the values underlying these Muslim tales were absorbed and eventually provided the rationalization for conferring more and more rights on women in the West, in the societies where these stories originated, they were always more honored in the breach than in the observance. Hence, you have things like girls being married mothers by age 12, women being severely punished for being alone with an unrelated man, or stoned to death or even being subjected to gang rape for adultery. If John thinks that's better treatment than women get in the West, then with no due respect, I disagree. Yes, some Muslim countries don't do things, those things, but are more enlightened and do treat their women well, though even in Turkey they treat Western women with disrespect. Now, Diana's argument was that we have spent all this time claiming there is no such thing as a rape culture, and now we're taking this as an opportunity to shift feminist vitriol away from us to Muslim men by saying that, oh yes, there is a rape culture after all. And it's, it's over there. Over there. Over there. She's wrong. First, we are right to attack feminists on this point. For decades, when they even deign to admit that women and Muslim and African nations are being oppressed, it's only to condemn men in the West. That's the height of hypocrisy, and I'm glad to see more mainstream sources now jumping on them for that, because I've been one of the few lonely voices doing that for more than 20 years. While there are dozens and dozens of articles, essays, and rants on my website that I have yet to convert from their original format, one example I do recall and quickly found had to do with female genital mutilation, and I linked to one of those pages on my website in the low bar, pointing out how feminists use such issues in other countries to further their campaign against men in the West. In addition, in the more than 20 years I have been publicly opposing misandry, I have never claimed that a rape culture does not exist anywhere. 
What I have claimed and proved, as have many others, is that there is no rape culture in the West. Some in the manosphere may have agreed with Diana and John and hung their heads in shame. I, however, am not one of them. Look, we have a legitimate reason to exercise great care and caution where inviting Muslim refugees into our countries is concerned. Some of them want to destroy us. Now, on Facebook, I've seen posts in which westernized Muslims point out that the people who want to destroy us came by their hatred honestly. Led by America, the West has pillaged many of the Muslim nations and killed countless thousands of them in wars which we started. They're absolutely right. The problem is the wealthy elite whose finger puppets in Washington, D.C. and other Western capitals lied and led us into those wars, and they want these angry men and women to come here and perpetrate acts of terrorism for the purpose of justifying not only taking away more of our freedoms and imposing an ever more totalitarian regime on us, but to justify making more war against the Muslim, Muslim nations. So it's in the interests of all of us to call a moratorium, oust the warmongers during the next election, which here in the United States is November 2016, and then thoroughly assess the refugee vetting process to assure as stringently as possible that nobody inclined to commit terrorist acts is allowed entry. Being an American Indian, I can tell you that my ancestors learned too late what happens when you trust too much. For the Backlash at Backlash.com, my name is Rod Van Mecklen.